guys, it's James. We are at another order house that we just purchased. I want to take you through it. Um, so this is a property that we just paid $800,000 for. It's actually a really good deal in this area. We're in Bellevue, Washington. Why did we get such a great price? Well, the first thing is we have a busy road here. It's on a 35 mile an hour road. It's not that great for resale. We adjusted our, our Performa down though and knocked $120,000 off our other comparables. And we also found comparables on the same type of busy road to verify our data at that point. Um, because it's on a busier road and it's in really bad shape, we got a better margin. Um, we're gonna, I'll show you how bad the shape is. So when you're looking at flipping these homes, those are usually what's gonna be the big indicator of whether you're gonna get that great, great deal. A lot of times you'll look on tax records, you see investors and they're like, they just steal a property. And they're like, how'd they get it that low? When you take a little bit further look, typically there's stuff like this going on, right? We got a property on a busy road, it's in terrible shape and it has a really tight floor plan. But so we're gonna talk about why we're buying it. Um, so we paid 800,000 for it. We are putting in uh, about $150,000. That's $100 a square foot for this house. It needs a lot of work. Um, and why? Because it looks like a James house. Uh Uh, it's packed full of garbage. We got an illegal addition off the back. Uh, and then this giant chimney here is really affecting the floor plan of the house that we're gonna need to take out. So I'm gonna walk you through what are we doing right now. So first thing we'll be doing on this property is we're gonna be reciting it, putting all new windows in, uh, putting a brand new roof on and landscaping the crap out of it. We're also gonna rip off that ugly carport in the front. And then once you get inside the property, we need to get the floor plan wide open at this point. We have really cool mid-century windows that allows in natural light, but then we got this wall blocking it off. So we're gonna open up this kitchen, make a great room concept. And this section here is gonna be a small little dining room. That's okay, that's so the comparables had it as well. And the one big bonus, whew, it's a nasty one, is there's this addition in this section through here. So the homeowner uh, had added this on. He was an engineer. He actually did a really good job. I checked the footings. I uh, had my uh, structural framer come out there and look at this. Um, and the cool thing is, it doesn't show up on the tax record, right? So we're, we're getting an extra 200 square feet in this house that wasn't accounted for when I pulled my original comps. So I'm discounting for the busy road, but now I just got an extra 200 square feet that usually sells for about 600 bucks a foot that's gonna increase the value at that point. Um, so that's a big value bonus. Uh, one thing about that with additions is you gotta be careful though. I'm, as I go in for permits, I need to notate the space or it's not gonna show up on the tax record and cause me financing issues. So we put that all in our planning that we're permitting this out, we're gonna have our additional space, and then we're gonna do the rest of the renovation. So on this property, um, there's a couple different ways that we can do it. The first way is we could, it's, it's a very small two bedroom, one bath property and we could create it into a, a one bedroom, one bath with a half bath for, to service on the main floor. We're gonna lose a bedroom here. That's gonna require us to get at least two bedrooms in the basement at that point, because we need a three bedroom house to hit the comps. The issue with that is it's really small and that's a bigger scope of work and it's gonna take longer and we're gonna have to spend more money and we're gonna have to push the price up at that point. It would be much better for resale. But when I have a negative impact property, I actually try to just get it shiny and looking good and not spend and reconfigure the, the, the property around. It keeps me on the deal less and I'd rather go for a lower price because of the busy road than have to go for the peak price because I'm perfecting the floor plan. So always double check what you're trying to accomplish. Sometimes going highest and best use for construction to maximize a floor plan is not the right call. Um, so this one, we're actually gonna, I, you know, originally I was gonna put in a, a, a primary suite. I decided not to after looking at the comps again, I can sell this thing for about 100 grand less if I don't do it that way, which is gonna be more affordable, affordable sells in this market. It's gonna be shiny, affordable, gonna have a busy road because the price is so affordable, people are gonna go right past this road. Um, so we got a bedroom here. We got one bathroom in here with an old, Towel, ooh, gross. Um, a bathroom just needs to be fully gutted. Unfortunately, it's not very big. 
and there's no real space for us to really move it either. Um, you know, typically when we're looking at adding a primary at this point, we're going to be trying to get this We'd want to add our bathroom next to the other bathroom, right? That stacks our plumbing. It gives us a wet wall. That saves you probably 25% on your plumbing bill. For us to build this out, we'd have to go with a full primary in this section in here and put in a bathroom here and then a walk-in closet, but we're going to need that. We're going to lose the bedroom count that we really need. So in here, we're going to keep this a one bedroom in this section. And then in here... This is gonna be, again, just, uh, we're just turning the bedroom. Everything's gonna stay where it is. Um, things that I'm looking for as I'm doing my walkthrough. Uh, it is a 1958 built house. So the wiring could be a full rewire or could not be. So as I'm going through these rooms, things that I'm looking for is, is the lighting in the right spot? That indicates a newer coat. We have switches here in the right spot that looks good. But the one thing I am seeing on this, it's in the right area, but it's a push button. When I have a push button switch, that usually indicates that the, the outlet is not grounded. Um, that means I'm probably gonna have to rewire this house. So when we're doing our original walkthroughs on properties like this, that's the things that we're looking for. Little hints and clues that are gonna help establish the budget. Um, the better our budget is when we do our first initial walkthrough, the stronger our offer can be and the less conditions we can put in it to get this deal. That's how we got this one. He had another offer. He sold it to us cheaper because we offered a five day close. Very, very quick. We did it after our walkthrough. So on this main floor, we're gonna open up the kitchen. We're gonna have a secondary bonus room, dining room, living room. We're gonna have three bedrooms, one bath over here. And then in the basement, this is where we're gonna really increase the value. So right now we have about um, 1,100 square feet up. Ooh, creepy basement. All right, so we're getting, we're getting dark, guys. We got no power, that's pretty common. Uh, I don't know about that. Um, hopefully we won't find something weird. Uh, so let's go to the basement here. So in this basement, we have an additional 1,100 square feet, but we need 300 of that for our garage. So that's gonna cut it down to 900 square feet. To get the right comp, I need a fourth bedroom. We have three up top right now. I need to get one down here. If I had enough room down here, I would actually put a second uh, bedroom down here and then uh, turn that into the primary, but it's gonna take too much money to do that. So we're gonna go simple. So down here, we got a couple cool things. As you can see, we got like a wet bar. That's, that's pretty rad. Um, but the, what I'm looking for, and this is the thing when you're doing these walkthroughs, don't get lost in the garbage. There's shit everywhere. You can be like, oh, what's that? What's that? Oh, oh my God. What I'm looking at is layouts and focus. Because the more I have to reconfigure this house, the more money I'm gonna have to spend. Um, the rest of it's all just garbage I'm tearing out. So as I come through here, I'm filling my spaces. This is a little bit short of an area. There's no way for me to get a bedroom in here because if I bring it out, it's gonna be in my hallway and I'm not gonna be able to get to my living room. So not a good space. Those are the things I'm looking at. The other things I'm looking for down here is what's the ceiling height. Right here, it's a little bit tight. It's about seven feet. If my ducts are in for the heating system, that's gonna bring down and it's gonna make it not feel good. So that's gonna tell me to budget for cadet heaters, rip out the furnace and go with a, with a shorter span. So as we kind of get through here, we got a fridge. I'm not opening that, never open the fridge. Um, now we're into the laundry section. This is the other thing I'm looking for. Where is my wet wall? It's right underneath the kitchen and the bathroom. So if I do want to add a bathroom in this area, because it only has one right now, I want to be in this location. It's going to save you a ton of money on your plumbing. You don't have to trench it in as far. Uh, the plumbing can stack right up right there. It's less materials, less labor. It's again, by keeping everything in the central area will save me about 25% of my plumbing. So as we're coming through, I got enough room for a laundry room. Ooh, look at this, John Lennon. That's a, that's a good picture. Probably shouldn't be touching things. See, don't get lost in the, the garbage. Um, and then we have, okay, so this room here, originally when they built the house, it's just kind of a closet area. They put in one toilet, but they didn't finish the whole bathroom. So they set it up for a bathroom. So I'm probably gonna keep it in this section. But as I'm going through the flow of the house, I have this section here is really choppy. I don't need it that big. I wanna get this wiped open. I'm gonna bring my wall back to here, have a laundry room, a bathroom in this section. And now I need to figure out where to get my bedroom. Problem is I'm running out of space here. We have our big bonus room. And then I got not the right angle here. Ooh, where's the lock thing? Um, so as we go through, I'm looking for more space. Okay, and I just found it. Okay, so this is gonna be our garage area. We have to have a garage, we're on a busy road. You always want parking when you're on a busy road. Um, 
and the garage goes back pretty deep at this point. So this section here is all dead space. We have a huge chimney in this section that's blocking off my floor plan. And I have about a 10 feet before the chimney, and then I have another three to four feet past that chimney if that thing gets removed. I can put a bedroom in this section. So I'd have a bedroom here, bathroom, laundry, wide open bonus with a uh, garage coming in this section, and we could pop a door in this end to go into hallway so it's separate off the bedroom at that point. Um, and so when we're trying to finish space, we're looking at where can we work things around. But then you have to look where the domino effect kicks in. Right here, I gotta take this chimney out to accomplish that floor plan. That costs money. This is gonna be five to $7,000 just to take that out. And so when you're doing your walkthroughs, slow down, look at your spaces. What do you need to do to maximize that space? Little things like this can blow up your budget. Um, so the good news is we can get another bedroom and bathroom down here. The bad news is I gotta spend about seven to 8,000 just demoing this out to get me there. The other bad news is if I take this out, I lose my cool fireplace upstairs. Uh, that's just gonna be a sacrifice to get the bedroom. It's a trade I'm gonna have to make. Um, I don't really want to because it's a cool fireplace, but there's no choice in that at that point. Um, so as we come through, we got a, now our new floor plan and we're looking a lot better down here. So we got our bonus room, we got our bedroom and bathroom space. And let's get out of this basement now because it's there's so much cobwebs. Uh, I do not like spiders. I'd rather have a mystery person in a house than a bunch of spiders. But where am I going from here? So after these next steps, I'm gonna go back to my office. I'm gonna look at the comps again. I wanna make sure that road's not gonna affect my value. At that point as well, I'm gonna recalc out my budget. I had in my underwriting budget $150,000 in there. I need to verify I can make that all work with these framing changes I need to, to make. So I'm gonna go back to my office, I'm gonna verify my comps, I'm gonna verify my budget, and then get ready to close. So, or kick the deal or ask for a price reduction if it doesn't work. If I'm over 150, I'm gonna ask for the reduction. If I'm not, then I'm just gonna get ready to close, which is in five days, so I gotta hurry up here. Um, so always double check your numbers, get your financing set up, interest funding is gonna be financing on this deal, and we are gonna close. We're gonna show you how we're gonna turn it. Stay tuned to Project RE.